Welcome everyone to Spiragus Media. We finally got something to talk about. Finally got something to talk about other than what's going on with the Florida State versus ACC case in Florida and the ACC versus Florida State case in North Carolina. So I'm sure everyone has seen, you know, the news drop that Greg Vance plans on entering the portal. Um, that opens up on the 15th. Transfer portal will be opened up on the 15th. So when they tell someone like Hayes Fawcett or their coaches or family members or media, uh, that's why you see plans on entering the portal. Um, things can change. There can be conversations had. There could be, if it is money related, those can be negotiated, blah, blah, blah. So does this mean that he's gone? Not 100%, no. It doesn't mean that he's 100% gone. Um, but I've been talking about Greedy potentially leaving for probably two months. Uh, biggest reason being is because Earl Little's there. There's a lot of competition at the nickel spot. Um, now Greedy has done a tremendous job for Florida State. I have zero issues with his play, zero issues with what he is, but the DB room is exactly what one of the um, listeners just commented. It's full. We have just a, a plethora of great DBs right now. Uh, it's – I like Greedy, though. Um Greedy came here and helped lift that room when it wasn't full, when it wasn't um, as dominant as it's going to be in the near future. So if Greedy ends up leaving, um, which I believe he will, uh, but if he does, I 100% wish him nothing but the best. You don't have to worry about Destin Hill joining um, Greedy. No, not at all. Not have to worry about that, not even in the least. They're buddies, but no, you don't have to worry about Destin Hill going anywhere. But we know, you know, another one that entered the portal not too long ago uh, was Joshua Burrell. Unfortunately, his time here at Florida State, the majority of his time was injured. Um, and then what happened? Well, it was pretty simple. Um, the wide receiver room blew up. It you started getting in the Johnny Wilsons, the Keon Coleman's. Uh, poor Tears started playing lights out, you know, the year before last. Um, you got Douglas playing. You got uh, Hakeem Williams, who's probably going to be this huge piece. Then you bring in Malik Benson. So there's a reason why guys are leaving. It's not because they don't want to be at Florida State no more. It's not because – um, they're not getting paid enough. It's because they're not going to get enough snaps. Based on spring tells you, um, you know, sometimes it takes up to the spring game. Sometimes you know beforehand. The writing gets put up on the wall. So so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, or two so-and-sos are in front of you for the position that you've been playing or the position that you want to start in. Now, I fully believe that Greedy would have been rotated in um, plenty um, in our liking. I don't believe that he would have been rotated in plenty to his liking. Um, even last year, he didn't play near the snaps that he did the year before. So he is looking for the betterment of his situation, what's personally going to make him play more games, play more downs, be that be that guy again. Um, so that's what he's looking for. And we fully have to respect that. Now, I'm going to say names that I would say are potential possibilities. Not stating that they're going anywhere. Not predicting that they are leaving. Just giving you the potentials of who's possible to leave. 
based off of how thick the room is. Maybe they haven't developed in what they should be. There could be a number of reasons why these names are coming up. Uh, James is going to be a little bit late, so we will go through these again and get his opinion on who he thinks. I may not have everyone in there that he believes leaves. Um, I do believe somewhere, and yes, it's going to be a little bit of a wide stretch number, but I believe somewhere between 7 and 11 guys leave in the portal. We already need, I think it's six, six more after uh, after Joshua Burrell and Greg Vance. If those two do hold, you know, firm, uh, you still need six more to leave to get down to your scholarship number of eighty-five. So, and I think Florida State is looking to possibly bring in another defensive tackle. I think they could potentially look in the direction of a defensive end. Um, I personally don't think we need one, but the right guys out there, you got to take them. Um, also, you could potentially look at bringing in a left tackle uh, just for depth reasons, not really looking for that starter, but you also wouldn't turn that down. Um, but some of the names that I'm going to throw up does not mean that I'm saying they're leaving. That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is I think it's possible. So we'll start off with Bryson Estes, offensive line, red shirt junior, six foot three, two hundred and eighty-five pounds. Estes has been here for a while. Um, he has not gained the weight um, that that I believe you're necessarily going to need to be an offensive lineman at Florida State. Um, but James, I'm going through possibilities, potentials of who could enter the portal. Not saying that they will, just given the possibilities of who might, who may. Um, Bryson Estes is the first name that I brought up. I did cover that Greedy Vance um, has stated that he will be entering the portal. Uh, obviously, he can't make that official until the 15th, um, but he has at least put it out there that he intends on entering the portal. I'm sure everybody has seen the graphics and Florida State and everybody's announced it. Joshua Brill uh, did this not too long ago as far as entering the portal. And I believe his name's officially in the portal because he actually graduated. So I think he's like a grad transfer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I didn't realize he had been here that long or that he'd been here long enough to graduate. But that was his statement months prior to the season ending that he would potentially be entering the portal after he graduated. And then after May, that's when he entered, or whatever month it was last year that he said it. So James fell off. He'll be right back. I had to get that microphone thing done. Gotcha. Um, so the first name that I brought up that could be a possibility of leaving is Bryson Estes. He's a registered junior. Um, he's been here for a little while now. Uh, obviously, he's an offensive lineman, 285 pounds. I, the reason I think that he could potentially leave, he's just not up. He hasn't developed into what I believe Florida State thought he would. I'm back. I don't, I don't want to interrupt. I just read something. Like, have you talked about like why people are leaving? Like, have we discussed? As any, because I've I've been in some group chats and people just like say like, um, you know, question loyalty. And I'm like, we're over the scholarship limit. Yeah. Like, and I'm not here to question anybody. But, like, if you're questioning the player's loyalty, then that means you have to question. In turn, you have to be fair, you have to question the adults, the coaches. Um, I don't want to say comments because I don't want to make it seem I'm coming out of the coaches. This happens. Like, we're over 85. We're not just over the sanctions. So, like, Greedy's not leaving because Greedy doesn't like Florida State. Right. I, have you ever seen Greedy? Battles in just posted Greedy barbecuing. And it was one of the funniest things. And I'm mad he's gone because I can't use that clip anymore, I feel like. But, like, Greedy's leaving because, actually, if anything, it's 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 a humbling experience to say, you know what, all right, I'm a senior. I got to do what's best for me, and this is also what's best for the team. Right. And 
it's not about I lost and I did this or that, man. Get out of here. Like, as a matter of fact, it's people doing this is going to listen to this pod, talking to this crap, it's going to listen to this podcast while they're at work applying for another job. Like, don't, like, if you're in quite, like, don't put yourself on this thing that you don't, like, with these set of morals that you don't do. Like, nobody works like my, like my grandmother, where she worked um, 40 years on the same job. Like, no, that's not the way this thing is. It is not just Florida State. Miami's going to have to do it. Florida's going to have to do it. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to bring somebody else in. We're going to have, not only are we going to have to get under 85, we're going to probably still try to go bring a cat from another school that you're going to praise that same mercenary. But my bad, just, it just, it's it's more so because of greedy. I was in the airport when I'm reading this stuff. Because I really, like, I, I'm a greedy Vance fan. Yep. And I know greedy is like, it's just a, it's a thing where he's doing what's best for him. And, and honestly, at the same time, what's best for him is kind of what's best for Florida State. So I'm back. I know we're talking about Estes, but, you know, yeah. But mm. well, no, I, I did start off, James, with – and that was before you logged on, but I started off with something very similar to what you said. I started off with saying it, it's not a – it's not a greedy doesn't want to be a Florida State anymore issue. It's – the room is full. Earl Little Jr. has been pushing, even though he's been limited, he's been pushing for that nickel spot since he's gotten here. That there has been so many conversations about who would be leaving in the DB room, who was set fit to be replaced with whomever. Uh, Greedy wanted more snaps than he got last year. So now he feels like those snaps will be even more limited if he was to stay. Also, Florida State, in the nature of, okay, Pat Sertain didn't bring Greedy in. I don't, I'm pretty sure it was the gentleman before. Well, I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, and nothing against that. It's just now Pat's bringing his guys in, and Pat's like, I'm not saying that anybody said, Greedy, you got to go. Um, but I'm I'm telling people that it's good for both sides. It's not a, well, he's not getting paid enough money. or it's it, Everybody goes to the money thing, the very first thing now. Um, we can't keep everyone. Florida State – cannot have this many guys in that room or any room for that matter and get below the 85 scholarship, which we at least have to get to 85, but below it based on the sanctions that we also have. So there's so many potentials to what could happen. Uh, I brought up Bryson Estes because he's been here and he's gotten very limited play time. Uh, He's just not been what I think the Florida State needs it. The offensive line. So I think that he's a potential move that uh, might enter the portal as well. And he might not. Like I said, I'm giving people potentials of who I believe could leave for a multitude of different reasons. Um, And I'll give those reasons as we go. The next one I'm not too happy with because he is a legacy recruit from the 2022 class. And it seems like the majority of the 2022 class has fallen off. Um, And I could be completely wrong about this one, um, but we haven't seen him. Uh, he's a defensive lineman, which is an edge, and it's Aaron Hester. Not 100% sure how that one's going to work out based off of he is now a redshirt sophomore. So this is going into his third year. From, yep, because he was a true freshman, redshirt freshman. Now he's a redshirt sophomore. So he hasn't, and I love Aaron to death. Like, if people go back and look, Aaron was one of my underdogs. I said that could end up being really good. Not saying that he will not stay at Florida State, not saying that we're pushing him out. But I'm picking people. Someone's got to go. More than one someone has to leave because we have to get below this number that we are currently pretty much over. So Aaron Hester and Estes are the first two that I'm going to point out. This one I really like too. And I think he's extremely, could be extremely good for us, but he's a redshirt senior and he's a wide receiver. And the wide receiver room is just uber talented right now. The the youth that's been brought in, uh, Luane McCoy making the earth shake. Um, You've got, uh, a guy before that, and Drewius Jacobs and Hakeem Williams. It, there's just too many wide receivers. Destin Hill being hurt 
Um, but still, Destin is going to be in that, that that spot next year for sure, if not later this year. It's just there's not a whole lot of room for everybody. So Darian Williamson, which is one I don't want to leave, um, I believe he's a potential to get or to move on. I don't even want to say pushed out, but to move on. This one a lot of people aren't going to like. But my question is, is if we don't get him more involved, what is he really doing for us? He had a couple of really great plays last year, but they were so few far in between that now the, the explosiveness that you have at the wide receiver position, and this gentleman was a quarterback. Now he's a wide receiver. So it's due span of potential. I don't know. Now, this is the guy that some people will be like, yes, yes, let him go. And I don't like that. Other people will be like, no, let him go back to his original spot. And that's going to be Kevin Knowles. A lot of people ain't going to want to agree with that one. But I see the potential of that possibly happening. He's a senior. And what you brought in with Conrad Hussey, what you brought in with uh, the Brown kid, what you brought in with, it's just, it's hard to see that he's going to get enough play time, especially with DBs in front of him um, at his original spot. There's just, there's a lot of talent in these two rooms, wide receiver and DB room and offensive linemen. There's just some young guys or even older guys now that just haven't stepped up to what they could be. So, James, those are the one, two, three, four, five that I put up of potentially leaving. Obviously, I think we're going to need – I'm telling everybody I think we have somewhere between five and eight leave, um, and that's five or eight more, not including uh, Joshua Burrell and Greedy Vance. Um, the reason that I say that is because – if I'm not mistaken, we're at 91. So if you take greedy away, you're at 90. So you got five more at bare minimum, if I'm not mistaken. So you got five more to go. And then there's you gotta you gotta get below that number. And even if you do buck the NCAA, um, you know, there's positions where you you're still you're not you don't have enough depth there, and you still need some rotational guys. Um I um I love being <laughs> Hester is uh, is technically a legacy player um, in the same way that no, it's not even in the same way that Amar Gaynor because uh, her hooped if I remember correctly, um, and we just found out you know about Tony Carter. I didn't know Tony Carter's dad. If you listen to the um, to my podcast, I didn't realize Tony Carter was a legacy. But you know, technically legacies are the kid of a player, whereas Hester is a legacy because his uncle um, yeah. played at Florida State. But um, I can see that. Uh, I, having coached against him, and one of the things that people don't realize about me is I, I, I'll tell you straight up, I used to joke about it, and I used to get in trouble. I'll take, I'm quick to tweet from the sideline now when, we, when I'm coaching a high school football game. And, you know, I'll tell you that, hey, I don't know if this kid – I'm very hard. That's why I want to be I'm very hard on pushing kids to Florida State because I want that standard to be properly. Like, if I tell your kid's good enough to go, it's good enough to go. I don't even know if I tell my own son he's good enough to go. But when I watched him, and it's not even so much that he wasn't a good ball player. We played him the last game of the season when he was at Fletcher. I just don't remember him making the play. And also, then I looked at his stats, and I looked – not stats, excuse me, his unmeasurables, because that's really what it comes down to. And I'm like, he's not very much taller than me. And the type of defensive ends that we like tend to be 6'4", 6'5", or, or higher, and, you know, around that 230 or, or more range, um, like when they're coming in. Um, Boots being on the lighter side, but Boots hits that 6'4", 6'5", um, mm -hmm. um, measurable thing that, you know, we figured we'd get him a, a few moons – under um, Coach Storms, he's going to – and then, like, you look at his dad, you're like, okay, he'll fill out. He'll be just like his pops. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I saw Estes, if I remember correctly, he was 77. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know if I could critique him, but I thought I was like, the only way he's going to probably be a guy is if he can block six. And if y'all remember, I was telling you, six made six, six gave 77. That was a long day. That was a tough road to hold for that young man um, on that day. But that, that'd be tough for anybody. So, but you got to lose. I think it's going to be not even just one offensive line. I think we're going to lose losing two, um, maybe even three, because we have depth there and we have young guys that could get that. They're going to redshirt that we need to get that develop those developmental reps in. Um, I even think it may hit the running back room. Mm-hmm. Um, but nowhere is more prevalent than the wide receiver. You have five seniors that are wide receivers right now, with one transferring in. One that's been a contributor the last two years. Well, no, I'm lying. He go 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 back to the Notre Dame game. He made a big catch against Notre Dame with Jakai Douglas. So you so Jakai's not going anywhere. Um, you know, it's the, it's the tough conversations and it's the side of the business that's been there forever that nobody really understood or paid attention to. Um, uh, I go back, I've told people the story of um when I came in my freshman year is me, Torrance Washington. Leon Washington, um, Lorenzo Booker, and dang, Thomas Clayton. And Coach Sexton came in and had a really tough conversation with Thomas Clayton after, like, right before we, had, we were getting ready to do our offseason condition. He told him he's going to have to gain some weight because he can't hold on to the ball and he's going to have to be a fullback. Now, when Billy told him that, Billy effectively cut him. Now, Thomas made the decision, but Thomas didn't come in there to play the same position that me and Torrance Washington came to play. And he knew he couldn't block like we could block. We know we couldn't run like he could run, but that's not what he would have been trying to do. So he decided it again. He had not a tra- It wasn't called a transfer portal. He just said he was transferring. Went on four official visits and there was no sitting out, but he did what he did what was best for him. And I know Florida state fans didn't rip him up for it, but cause they didn't, they probably didn't even know who the hell he was. So, you know, you don't have the quarterbacks. You got running back. Can't lose really anything in tight end room unless you just really feel you're not going to get anything out of uh, is, it, is it Powers? Is that his yeah, name? Powers is actually injured for the rest of the spring. Yeah, so he's probably not going to go anywhere. He's going to probably chill out. I don't think he was that bad. Um, outside of that, I mean, you could lose a Kevin Knowles. I don't think you. I don't think you want to as much as people. I think people give Kevin. Kevin gets a really, really hard knock. Because yep. of, because he, he, and without people realizing, he was playing he was playing safety and that's not what he was comfortable with. And now you got Brown that the other Brown that that's that he was playing corner and he wasn't comfortable with that. He was comfortable with safety. So like now people playing their natural positions, maybe they'll play a little bit better. Um, but again, tough conversations and these these are conversations that we have to remember that twenty the guys who are trying to figure out life are having these with guys who kind of have life figured out, but they get paid a lot of money and their jobs are dependent upon it. And it's, and I think um, I saw um, Mr. Tor Feely put up in here or Lawrence T put up in here about, man, it's been that long. And some of these guys have been there. Like they made this decision that that, that high school decision you make is from the heart. Like when you commit to Florida state. So it's, I, I want people to realize it's not an easy decision. It's not just a money decision. It's not these things, but, um, but I, I, I basically concur. I, I agree with the, with where you where you were coming from, um, with the guys who, again, I don't want. I'm not cutting them, right? And see how that could be just, you know, it, it, it's hard again for me. It's just again, I don't know why. It's just, I do it on the NFL side when I'm covering the NFL. We play, um, we do things like um, your fantasy 53 man roster. Like we cut people all the time. I, I cut Taven Bryant every year. That he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And um, what's my guy's name? Uh, 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 Clavion, Chaseon, whatever. Um, it was sorry as defensive end. I cut him all the time. <laughs> but those are grown ass men. It's different when it's, you know, you know, these guys who are striving for something that we all want. I mean, there's names that I can throw out there that are possibilities, but some I think Kevin Knowles for some is gonna be hard. I think that Williamson for some is hard. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to be realistic on what is in front of them possibly now. Um, Can't make the club in the tub, man. Like, like I hated seeing CJ Campbell leave last year. Yeah. I love CJ, man. 
But it made sense for CJ and also Florida State. But, you know, I, there's a question I'm getting asked a lot right now. Is CJ – uh, listen to me. I'm about to say his name again. Is Sam Singleton or Kaziah Holmes going to leave? I don't – I don't see Sam leaving. I don't either. Um, because Sam just got there. Um, Kaziah might. Kaziah's had a, actually, and I've, I've been not critical. Like, Kaziah had a really good the scrimmage I watched. He had a really good scrimmage. Like, but right now, the there's there's a one and a two. Technically, they're both ones, the way we describe it. But um, Toa's going to play. Toa's, Toa's that guy. Toa, Toa's going to be Toa's going to be it. <laughs> like, he ain't going nowhere. Obviously, I mean, I don't even mean not going to like he, he's going to be a, a key contributor for our offense next year. And I think Roy Dell um, came over and he's going to be that. Now, what's what I've seen, Cam Davis is going to see the field like Cam going to get on that field. Then it comes. Who's the guy after that? And. The hard part is, do you choose? How do you choose? Because there's another kid who's not even there yet. Yep. Um, Makai isn't yep. even there yet. But do I do I like and see what Kaziah could do and with the patience and explosiveness? But we got that with Roy Dell now. Is it enough to be able to keep him there to where I, I do what I do, or do I have him go do what's best? Because the goal is to go to the NFL. You can't go to the NFL if you don't play, right? And the goal for the running backs coaches is, is to make sure that I can be the running backs coach for the next few years. And you could give those reps, those game reps to Sam Singleton and Cam Davis, who are younger, they give you what you want, and, and it, but it's, it's the drop-off that significant. But we're talking about the third or fourth string guy. Like, we're – like, nobody's – I don't care what anybody say. Nobody's four or five deep in every position. Like yeah. it's like not not with guys who are ready to play out the gate. But I think Sam is somebody. I don't see Sam leaving. But Kazai is a guy who we recruited out of high school under the tag. Didn't work out. Went to Penn State. Didn't work out. Came down here. Worked his butt off. But he's a guy that might need to go. Um. Um. Going. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really even know how to. Again, it, again, it's just a thing where again, tough conversations. But but the, but that's one of the running backs that I would think like, hey, at, the, at when they're doing their um their evaluations, um, might there might be a tough combo for her there. Yeah, a lot of people are moving to the tight end room. You know, we had moved Brian Courtney to linebacker, now back to tight end. He didn't work out at the linebacker position, um, so they moved him back to tight end. I think we're so shallow in the tight end room right now. Not saying that it's not possible. Um, because if they have plans to pick up another tight end in the portal, then sure, it's very possible. Um, but you don't know where Jarrell Jer Power stands as far as injury goes. He may or may not be back. You also look at um, – Tom was it Landon Thomas, who I think is going to get burned this year just because of how good he is. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got Kyle Morlock that leads the – Leads it, and then was it Preston Daniels that's the, the other one? Now, I guess it's possible that Preston might go somewhere else. I don't I don't know if you lose anybody from the tight end room just because you're not that deep there. Yeah, so, I, that's why I keep – but the, so you, what you, you got to have at least three to four. And so if, we let, if somebody leaves, we're not – like unless we – there's the fear of the unknown, but like we can, I, got, I think I talked about this on the show here. Even like, hear me out. Even if like, let's say Kaziah or a running back leaves, you still have we can still go twenty personnel. Um, like which which I would love. The, the biggest mismatch on the field is a running back on a linebacker. I you know I know he's got that weight, so I like him a little bit more running back. But like you know, Tola, Tola could be a little could be um Reggie a little Reggie Bushish. Um, if you put him out there at that slot, at that um, at not really a slot, more of a wing um, type position, and he can create all kinds of different mismatches for you. Like you don't want him blocking, obviously, but we can like with with DJ, we don't need to have 
We don't need it. We're not running. Tw- we don't have a biscuit, so we're not running too tight. Like, so we can get that that fallacy out of our head. And that's not what Murloc does. Murloc's a big body, but he's a big body as a target, not a big yeah. body as a blocker. Yeah, and everybody forgive me. Jackson West is the one that's left. Preston Daniels was already transferred. Um, y'all forgive me. They're both white tight end. I like um, I like Jackson. I do too. I the thing is, is there's nobody that I've named that I don't like that I don't think is a good kid or has done some like greedy. Obviously, we have to realize with greedy doing what he did at Florida State. He was probably per per stats the third or fourth best DB for his stats go on Florida State's team. If he leaves, then you're losing production. That's obvious. But are you? You know, like if someone that we know Greedy's came in and done what he's done at Florida State. He's been a valuable piece, especially the year before last. It was a, Huge piece that we needed. So we know that we don't want to see certain people leave. Like, I'm not a big fan of Kevin Knowles leaving if if he was to decide to. Not a huge fan of it because I think he was trying to do what was best for the team and become a depth piece at safety. And it's just not as transferable as people thought. That transition from corner to, to safety isn't for everybody or vice versa. It's not for everyone. Not everyone can do it. At a high level, um, I still think he held his own at times, um, but it still is what it is. When you move to the wide receiver room, I, the only reason that I pick out uh, Deuce Span and Williamson is because of what they didn't do last year. Now, Deuce had some plays last year. Um, a lot of people are bringing up DeMarco Ward. Um, possibly. I I doubt that one just because of how young he is um, or how short of span he's been here. But anything's possible. Um, Edwin Joseph is pushing. You know, that, that's the thing. Like, that's the reason why you might see Kevin Knowles move on because you've got Edwin pushing so hard. You've got Conrad pushing at the safety position hard. You've got you, – you just got pieces at DB like Earl Little coming in. You, you've got pieces that have came in that potentially just make that room too deep. Um, and I'm with James. I think there's actually two or three um, offensive linemen at leave, and I've only brought up Estes. Um, I don't want to say the other two names right now, the ones that I'm thinking um, that could be potentially gone. Um, but this is part of the game. Like We cannot fall in love with everyone to the point that we get mad because they move on or have to move on. That's not something that – I mean, I guess we can. We're all fans, and we don't really have any – nothing comes against us if we do it. But I personally don't believe that you freak out because any player leaves. Um, like, Treshawn Ward was one of my favorite running backs that we had and watching him leave. And then C.J. Campbell leave, and he was another one. We were pretty close with them. So wanting to see them leave, no. Never wanted to see him leave. Is there anyone, James, on the defensive side of the ball, um, defensive line-wise, outside of Aaron Hester, that is a potential um, that could possibly leave in, in your eyes? No, I think um, the way our de- – like, again, because with, with the depth and, and – not at least – well, yeah, because they would have to leave early like because they don't know what they're doing at D-tackle. They don't know if there's a – one thing I don't think is we're just going to go storm the spring um, the, the spring transfer portal market like that, obviously because we don't have the resources and scholarships. But, you know, it was funny because I've been saying this since um, Durge has been coming – getting ready to come on campus. And he finally talked about doing the cross-training between D-tackle and defensive end. And I mm-hmm. talked about people how we can actually – we can still run our four three with a three four with a, with a three down look because mm-hmm. of some of the size between Lolo and Durage. So when I look at the defensive ends, that means you're going to need depth. You're going to need Jones. You're going to still need um, is it Turner, the boy, the other one from yeah. um, Louisiana is really good. I think he's coming on. Um, you don't get rid of um, Boots um, right now. You still got to continue to go in and, and drive that. Um, 
you know, you talk about Hester, that might be the only one because he's been here a little bit longer and I don't see a route for him to beat out the guys who are in front of him. You know what I'm saying? So, like, those are um, – so I think our defensive ends are straight. We can't cut. We don't have any room to cut D tackles. We need. We only got five, I believe. So we need a. We actually need another one. Um, that's what sparked a lot of the argument. If the kid Bear Alexander was actually going to truly be in the transfer portal or not, would Florida State take a shot at him? Um, but you know, maybe in a linebacker. But I don't even think. I think those linebackers. If stuff is going to happen to that, you'll hear about that at the, the 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 winter transfer portal. Right. I think they're going to keep those guys guys there. I just uh, like the defense the defense is really where we're 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 the strongest at. We, yeah. we have more knowns. Um we, we have a lot of unknown knowns on offense. We have known knowns um on defense. But so you're not going to go trim too much where you're going to need that consistency and that strength. Um, that's that would be that's my thoughts on that. Here's another one that people aren't going to like too much, but I could see it potentially happening, um, just because again, the wide receiver room is uber talented. Um, I don't want to see this happen, but when you bring people in like Malik Benson, um, who can take a top off of the defense, um, you've got explosive players like Madrevious Jacobs, you've got explosive players like Hakeem Williams, Camden Fryer looks amazing already. Um, and then not to mention Wheezy, which I've already spoke about, but we've got freshmen coming in. They're making non-freshmen. It's just like the, the, I guess it was the Adam Taylor movie makes people that run fast, not look fast. That just, that's what these kids are coming in. The speed so much different, but James and I probably agree that this is one of our favorite guys because of what he did against Miami and so on. But is four tier a possibility? No, I yeah, but I don't think I think he's going to be one of the guys that's, that stay. But that one wouldn't shock me. Based upon again, you can't make the you can't make the league if you don't play, and it's not that he's not good enough. It's um. Again, like you said, Malik Ben. Like when I'm looking at the charts, you have Malik Ben. Well, now Destin Hill being hurt um, helps Portier's case a little bit more because you could you could go Benson, Portier, uh, Mykeen Williams. Originally, I was thinking my dream lineup would have been Benson, Destin Hill, uh, Mykeen Williams. Um, but you've got Jakai Douglas still. You've got a bunch of other guys. But I could really see, you know, a a school coming and saying, hey. Here's a couple of dollars. Here's not, not I mean, maybe more than a couple of dollars, but here's some stuff here. We're going to make you, we, we have all intentions of making you a number one here for us. And you couldn't even hate the kid for taking that because Benson came. It's basically what we pitched to Benson. Um, I, although his coaches left, but still similar situation. Come over here and let's do that. But I was thinking more would be Deuce um, Williamson. Deuce and Williamson will be the two. I don't think we lose Deuce Williamson. And um and Spain, excuse me, yeah, Deuce, Deuce Williamson, <coughs> and Portier. <coughs> I don't see us losing all three of them. A uh, huge shout out to Michael Davis for the five dollar donation. He says, "Late to the show, but do you think we should get another DN?" I like Olohea Jones and Pat Payton. I think the West Virginia guy, which is George I, uh fits better at defensive tackle. Hmm. I think he's cross training for both. Yeah. Um. Again, again, he's doing what he. Like, yeah, Marvin Jones, little shade tree is a stand up D. It's, it's a pat. Is a pat. Is a true pass rusher. Yeah. Um, him and Patrick Payton are, are those things. Um. If you can get, I mean, originally they were going to bring in three. Um. They were bringing in Zion. Zion Young was going to Florida State until Zion Young froze. And mm-hmm. got a little nervous, and then we got hit with the sanctions, and then there was no ability for communication to happen. So, um, I mean, it wasn't out like they were trying to bring in three DN. So, with Nigel Lee Kelly hitting the portal and some other guys hitting, it's just if the numbers make sense, they'll can they, they'll they'll do it. Um, you know, from what out from sources told me, they're just trying to figure out where they can get the most quality. Can they get a qual? Can they, if they can get a quality D tackle, 
they'll take the quality D tackle. If they can't, then they may go ahead and take a defensive end. What are you thinking about the possibilities of Florida State looking at um, the off- inside offensive lineman, uh, Jason Zamadella, who plans to enter the portal from USC, who just got there? Should have brought his ass here in the first place. But, like, um, but I, you know, again, that's a kid that if you can – if he's there, he's interested in coming back. Come on. I know some people have talked about Ohio State and some other different things. But, like, again, let's say he does get him. Was he, he was a four-star, right? Mm-hmm. Was he a five-star? He was a high-ranking guy. I do know that. He should have followed his teammate on over here. But if it works out, why the hell do we care? You know right. what I'm saying? Everybody's complaining and bitching about trenches and stuff. But, like, it, it looks like it's, it, it always works itself out. Um, so, uh, but I do think if, if, but again, he's a, not a development. Yes. He's a developmental guy. He's a future guy. If you can, that kid from Arkansas, if you get that guy that I I take the guy from, cause I believe he has more than one year. You get the guy from Arkansas before you go get the kid from, um, the the kid that should have came to Florida state in the first place. I agree. I'm wondering, you know, a lot of people. Hold on, let me see who gifted these memberships before I – Jeff Hill just gifted – I don't know, Pete saying a bunch of stuff now. Uh, let's see. Jeff Hill gifted five uh, Spirit X memberships. Uh, Montre was one. Michael Morris was one. Young Bleak was one. Girl Master was gifted a membership as well. So I really appreciate that. Um, Jeff, that was awesome. I lost my train of thought because of what was going on. We have right at 400 people watching live on Twitter. We have almost 300 watching live on YouTube. I ask everyone that watches on Twitter to come over to YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Come over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. Um, also, there's a multitude of reasons why you should. Um, Twitter's great. And it's a great way for people to find you. Uh, but YouTube pays bills for you doing the exact thing that you're doing on Twitter. You are watching this video on Twitter. You can watch this video on YouTube the exact same way, probably better quality. You can comment. Your comments more than likely will end up here if you ask a decent question or make a decent statement. And you can also have the possibility of checking out the memberships and becoming a part of the Discord and getting the giveaways of the tickets and all of that. Um, James, the Garnet and Old uh, podcast, the two guys there, will be coming to the tailgate. I told them that they were good to come. They're going to – they've got fans that are going to come, donate – We'll buy tickets and also Garnet and Old's going to donate toward MFTK. So they'll be there. Um, I'm trying to check something real quick before because I don't want to make the wrong statement. $2 donation from Michael Davis. Uh, love to get DJ's brother over here at D Tackle. Is his brother a defensive tackle or a DN? DJ's brother is a defensive end. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do you feel like Florida State's in any – so we've got a walk-on at running back in Jackson. Then you've got the three guys. From Lincoln, fullback. I think – is that the kid we're talking about? I'm talking about – quarterback or running back? Quarterback. Oh, oh, yeah, the Tampa kid, the Orlando kid. Orlando Yeah, we got got Jackson as a walk-on. We've got Luke Cromahawk as our pick for this past class. We've got uh, Brock from was that the class before? We got then we've got DJU. Is there any worry about any of the quarterbacks wanting to transfer? Because a lot of people are asking that question as well. They're not going to do it now. Mm-hmm. There will be a uh, there will be a transfer next spring. Um, I can tell you that much. Um, we already know what they're doing. So, so Tramel, Tramel is committed right now. Talked to his dad. Talked obviously. I had to leave the show. Was it Tuesday we did? It feels like everything's so. Like, uh, no, it was Wednesday. No, it was Tuesday when I left the show. I was talking with Tramel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they uh, Tramel's. So he'll be here. 
there's going to be a lot more competition in the room. So you'll have Jackson. And, guys, Jackson is just not ready to play now. Jackson's going to be more than just a quad. Like, quad, like he'll end up eventually transferring out after he's really served his purpose, like really mm-hmm. developing, really watching, and getting good. Lucas, every all signs are pointing to me, in my opinion, of Luke going to be that guy. And but Brock is going. Brock isn't a pushover, so um, I think we'll be in a pretty good, pretty good shape. Um, and I think this this year's schedule um, is conducive for us to be able to go in and rotate those guys. Put them in situations where they can actually go in and, and start getting some reps, start getting some plays. Um, but I don't, I don't really see um, that 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 happening. But until next year, because um, I, I do believe that they're going to still go. If there is a quality transfer portal um, veteran guy that we can bring in, I think we'll do that too. Just again, just to add some some maturity to the room, because you don't want to just have a sophomore two red shirt freshmen and a true freshman in your quarterback room and say, I'm good. So, um, yeah, I think that, I think we'll see next year. And, you know, a lot of people do keep forgetting about that. As Chris Weeks put it in the comments for YouTube, uh, we got Amari Williams coming in the summer as well at defensive end. I forgot about him. Yeah, he's going to definitely be a guy that's just – that we just got that in, in. And so he's a hell of an athlete. He played tight end too, didn't he? Yep. Yep. I've already been thinking about that back and forth. And, you know, you still got, you know, um, like you said, um, McCall hasn't got here yet for the running back position. Danzy is, but could be potentially the fastest kid on the team. And that's really saying something. Um, then we've got, what is it? Uh, Elijah Moore isn't here yet either, is he? That's the one from who, the Maryland? kid from DC. Yeah, yeah, they, Maryland. Yeah, he's not here yet. So I mean, there's that's that's why I'm saying the the wide receiver room is BJ Gibson's here, isn't he? Or is he not here yet? Shit, I don't remember. But there's another one. Um, are we worried anything about DD Holmes? Uh, are we worried about Ward? Um, I'm trying to think of any of the ones that, you know, could potentially be pushed out, but you're starting to get into the grit of someone's going to leave. Are you worried about Armella possibly leaving because of all the rumors that was around that? Wow. Cool. I don't, but go. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a, it's a thing where the goal is to win games and, yep. What people want to like recruiting, whether you want to believe it or not, recruiting has changed. I, 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 we all, and we all have our thing. My thing is, I don't like 707. Be, I'm quite I'm very, I don't, and they're not going to make me like it. They're mm-hmm. not going to make me like it, but it's a part of the game. I can at least recognize that that's part of what these kids are going to do. The transfer portal is here, it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. Like, if you miss on a kid without what you didn't do, because the way we recruit the transfer portal the same way we recruit high school, and it makes all the sense in the world why it isn't like we're not coming over here. We're not putting the sparklers out for these kids. We're not doing all of that stuff. We're not, again, we, we've told you you recruiting is like running game, man. If I got to tell you you're pretty every day, then you're not the girl for me. I need a, I, I, I just, you know, I can't, I think, I hate to quote Drake. But um, Drake had this thing. I cannot convince you that I love you for a living. Like, we got to go to the next person. And so, like, if um, Armella, who is, like, you don't just play a guy because, oh, we recruited him. Who do we think right now that he is absolutely better than to start? Now, I say these things to preface it. He made the right move to go into the interior. If you watched his highlights, even when he was doing his the, um, the camps, he was just very aggressive. But a lot of that stuff can be considered holding, and you can't just slam and throw fling guys around like that. That's how quarterbacks get hurt. Mm-hmm. But on the interior, as wide as he is, quick step, all of those things, he's strong, he's powerful. There are things. All it takes is an injury <laughs> to one of our interior guys, which 
I don't know if you've watched our offensive line the last four years. Shit happens. Then he goes in and he plays, and then you what you do, and I've done it. Once you get that job, you don't let nobody get that job back. Again, if you listen to Dope Boys, Tony Carter talked about it. A lot of people talk about it. When they got – once you get on that field, my job is to make sure you never get – like, we can be friends, but you ain't never starting again, partner. You can just kiss that goodbye. Mm-hmm. And that's really where the mentality um, has to take place. But all of this – you know who else isn't going to play next year? Isn't going to start next year? Lucas Simmons. He was highly regarded, and he probably and he should be playing eventually. We got five. Was it? No, we got four seniors on the offensive line. Yeah. Like, and not. Excuse me. I apologize. We have no. We have six total six. seniors yep. in our in our O line room. Yep. So what that tells me is develop this year, and you know what's going to be for you. Twenty twenty five is going to be your year. And then if you ball out one year in 2025, go on and get your money. Get your bread, Poppy. But, like, I I don't – like, again, I'm not saying this because I dislike Armella. I think Armella – I don't know Armella. His dad is – he's a legacy, all of those different things. But people, like, worrying if they're going to be able to counteract that. Like, he goes to Miami. You know what he's not going to do if he goes to Miami and transfer? He ain't playing there either. Have you seen what their offensive line of Gruden is? Have you seen what they're doing? Right. Hell, my only reason that I want Nigel Lee Kelly right now is to bring them in, develop them, watch them get drafted, so we can say we took two of your players and made them way better than you. Yep. Huge shout out to Jeff Hill for the twenty dollars donation. He says, "Do you think we need any more help on the offensive line, or do you think we're okay there?" I think we definitely should bring in a quality defensive tackle if we can. We have been talking about the defensive tackle position that we definitely need to bring in a quality piece there. Um, offensive line, if it's the right offensive lineman, I don't. You never turn down linemen in my eyes, even if that means that you lose something else. And that sounds crazy to some people, but this game is won in the trenches most, if not all, of the time. Your defensive line and your offensive line, to me, are the most important pieces period they've always been that way and finding ready to go college ready offensive linemen isn't the easiest thing in the world because most of the time offensive linemen that transfer aren't ready to go they're leaving for a reason they're getting pushed out most of the time most of the offensive linemen have a good enough deal and start enough and play enough that they don't leave now, it happens. It's just it's rare. It does not happen in handfuls of people. Like, you don't get 10 offensive linemen that are ready to go in each portal. Not that I've seen yet. Now, the portal is still somewhat new. Uh, but so far, I haven't seen, well, there's eight offensive linemen that I would love to have. I, I haven't seen it. So, um, you have to be very particular on who it is that you bring um, when you bring them. Um, I think that Florida State is doing a phenomenal job, whether some people do or don't. I don't believe Byers that transferred in. I don't believe um, Darius Washington that transferred in. I don't believe um, a majority of these guys that came here at Florida State were as good as they are now under Coach Atkins. I don't believe that. I don't believe they were this good already especially Byers. Now, Washington, maybe, but now he can play all five positions. Yeah, I I, I think he was good, but I think, again, that's why Younger Vert, if you want to say something that you want to be critical, just he's easy, but this is still a compliment. It's a younger version of Odell. Yeah. That's Atkins. I mean, you know what's going to happen when you come come to Atkins? You're going to get developed. You're going to learn how to play. You're going to learn how to play the way he wants you to play. And Washington will be a guy that can, that will get drafted. Even for, He's going to get drafted for this reason alone. Offensive line, they, 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 um, act, they keep seven to, seven to eight active on a game day roster. The reason why is you have to have swing linemen. Um, the left tackle position is different than left guard, different than center, which is different than the right guard. Right guard and left guard ain't the same. And right tackle and left tackle ain't the same. But if you have one guy who can who knows and has experience playing all of those different things, you're gonna be fine. 
And that's kind of what we have with, with Washington. He's played every position on an offensive line, if I remember correctly, which is amazing. I think what, what I'm most excited about is, is that people continue to look at Atkins and say, well, he's not doing this or he's not doing that. Spoke about it on the episode before, um, actually two episodes ago, at the Hall of Offensive Linemen that we're going after for this class. Because a lot of people doubted it. A lot of people were doubting that we're going to get these kids, blah, blah, blah. All I can tell you is June 21st, June 22nd, technically the last week of June is going to be fun. For Florida State recruiting, I, I don't. Oh no! Last year was July fourth. We had the fireworks in July. Miami we had, had you had five. It was either four or five in the month of June that committed last year. But then you had that huge plethora in July. This is a bunch of guys did it one right after the other on the fourth and also the fifth. But we usually start taking. We usually start taking verbal commits in June. It's usually when it starts. Not that we don't take them before that. It's just Mike and the staff have seemed to come to this conclusion. I want you to get all these visits out of your way. I want you to really get between what schools that you're going to really consider as the possibility. And then it's that's when Mike and the staff start pushing harder. Maybe a month before that, they start pushing harder. But then they start getting the – they give the okay. If you want to commit, you're free to commit. And then that's when it comes out from everywhere else, um, when they want to do so, the graphics and all that stuff. I know that on June 21st, there's going to be, I think it's eight top offensive linemen in this class. that are They're going to be visiting on the 21st. And people are already talking about that's where it's all going to start and all of that stuff. So – uh, James, what do you think about, because we're talking about offensive line, what do you think about um, Leonard that we brought in from Florida? What is he looking like? I think he's a guard or, or a center. I think he's the swing guy. He's the guy, the interior guy that's going to, at this point right now, because he's the newer guy still learning stuff, he's the interior guy that's going to be able to play both, that, that play that play those three positions in the middle. Um, and with his size and the way he pulls and his athleticism, I think um, – he would definitely be an added piece again, which is another reason why just like, you know, who, who is what you call it just outright. We can't just say play this guy. Who is he better than? And I mean, right. again, in, yeah, as a guy who coached before and has, has been there, like, again, I just, these are things that I try to look for, make sure I don't become that as a dad either. Like, you know, I, 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 I of course I think my kid is better than everybody else, but that don't mean he is. You're supposed to think that, but I think Leonard is a guy who um, is going to come in, is just coming in and keep working, man. Like that, that's really just what it all comes down to, man. Work and um, what, what's our boy? Um, uh, well, I can't think of it. Was the Corey Fuller always says, just work. Yep. Oh, I love his like one minute videos that he does on Twitter and Instagram. He gets me going pretty good. Um, Boucher is different too, though. Mm-hmm. It's just a different mentality altogether than. It's old school. I mean, you know, um, got the definitely Old Testament. David's mighty men. Like I, I was telling yeah. somebody, you know, people always pick on me. I said, I, I read that book through and through. I know it's some cool ass stories in that book. But um, David didn't get to the position that he was in without having some badasses that put him in that position. Right. Like, go read it. Go read that. Like, and that's what Boucher. Boucher is true, like, like South City. South City is tough. South City was a tough area. It's a it's townhouses now, but yeah. it was a, it was a really it was the project that you you got to know people to go. You, you just didn't walk up in South City without without knowing somebody. Up in, I ain't date girls in South City. I can tell you that much. Um, but that wasn't my forte. But um, but Boucher came from out of that, um, and he's very um, you know, I, I love it. Um, like he's a great guy, really good dude. Well, a lot of people have been asking this question, and there's been some people putting predictions out, and I agree. Um, my, my list is you're going to see Alabama hit this portal heavy. Miami's going to hit this portal heavy. No uh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Miami Miami. had everybody they needed. That's what I thought, too. That's what they told us. They lied to us. They've been doing good in recruiting. And, like, so where they going? They, Miami's over the limit, too. Well, you know what? God bless. Do what you got to do. Miami's fixing to have – 
But now, and this is if the guy in Miami is telling me the truth. And I, he usually does. But they're going to have like 11 transfer out from what they've already had. Was it two start running backs or two running backs leave? Uh, and then you got Nigel Leap leaving. Uh, they had Brown leave already. Ace That's crazy. crazy. Then, then um, um, what's his name? Um, Urethra, Gabby Urethra, write the article about how Florida State has all these transfers and Miami doesn't. And just uh, oh, no, no, it wasn't that they had all these transfers. All our transfer starters, and then when I look at Miami's starting potential starter list, reads worse than anything we've ever had with our, with our transfers. And they mm-hmm. don't even know if those guys are any good yet. They got puff paint. They got better fact. They're starting their starting quarterback and their backup quarterback, the puff pastry guy, whatever his name is. Those are like both of them are tra- transfers. But, but yeah. it, you know, to listen to them talk to, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having hope. But I feel very sorry for Cam Moore if uh, everyone else doesn't do their job because he's going to get blamed for every bit of it. Miami is a great place to visit. I just, the airport stinks. Yeah. Um, I was just there, but, you know, but outside of that, it's a very good place to visit. I would never want to be in a situation where, I, I couldn't at least visit Miami. So, like, if Cam Ward goes seven and five, it's probably never going. to – It's probably done in Miami. Like, they're they're not going to treat they're not going to treat him like they treat Malik Rogers and some of these other guys who, for whatever reason, talk like they were good. But that's a that's a podcast for another day. Yep, y'all make sure that you get over to Den Media uh, right here on YouTube. Uh, James is back from vacation. He's back. Um, he will be um, – when you, do you go live tomorrow? Yep. Um, tomorrow morning we will actually do a show because um, I got a lot of stuff. We didn't talk about anything but the trial on um, on Wednesday show when we had Doug. And then um, we're trying to get prepared for the tailgate. Um, I am way behind. Well, as far as the parking and all this other stuff, I got to figure shit out. But it's going to be good. So y'all make sure that you get over to the Den Media Group, nine thirty ish. Yeah, nine thirty ish. Yeah, ish. Nine thirty ish in the morning. Make sure that you get over there to check that show out. Also, he is five hundred away from six thousand subscribers. Make sure that you go and subscribe to the channel. And I always do this because I never looked before, but I can tell you real quick. Uh, we are at 5,936 subscribers here on Spirit Addict. Oh, take that back, 5,938. So, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Now, don't, don't waste any time. It's a limited time offer. Subscribe to the channel before you can't. Whatever you want to do. Um, but make sure that you do check out the memberships as well. There's also a shopping part of this. If you are already a member, whether that's a silver chief, gold chief, platinum chief, ultimate chief, whatever you are, there are t-shirts for sale. There are coffee mugs, water bottles, um, pants, shorts. I think there's shoes in there as well. But go check out all that. There's a bunch of merchandise on the shop portion of the YouTube channel. All of that goes to help support Florida State athletes. Um, you become a member. You become a member of the Discord as well, uh, where you get news as fast as I can get it to you, or as fast as James puts it out there. Um, but make sure that you come and check that out as well. We appreciate you all for showing up tonight. Uh, we had over 500. Real quick, no nonsense. If they're under, if if they're under like 12 or 13, kids are free. Kids get in for free as long as they're 12 or under, 13 or under. But just bring them. That's what James does. All, just bring them. Um, we might have some T-shirts at the spring game, Paul. We we may. I don't know if I will or not. Um, but we had over 500 and something watching live on Twitter. Uh, we had almost 300 watching live here on YouTube. 
So I appreciate everybody supporting the channel and supporting what we do. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it on social media. Let people know where you watch your Florida State news at. And we will see y'all again Monday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern on this channel. But James will be going live at 930-ish in the morning um, over at Den Media Group for Big Games BS. So make sure you check that out. Everyone have a good one and go Knowles.